I'm Melissa Mantini with Canadian HR Reporter TV. I recently sat down with Carolyn Kay, a lawyer with Hicks Morley, to talk about pay equity compliance. What are the obligations for a company under the Pay Equity Act? So certainly for employers that were in existence in 1990, their obligations date back now 22 years in terms of when they were to have developed a plan. And so they have to achieve pay equity and there's a whole host of steps that they have to go through, identifying what the job classes are in their organization, determining their gender dominance, and then rating the jobs to figure out which jobs are of comparable value. And then at the end of the day, adjusting their wage rates accordingly. And so that's an analysis that will have to be done. And if it hasn't been done, uh, certainly, as I say, the uh, liability can be significant. What is the Pay Equity Commission doing now that could affect employers? For the most part, complaints have always been uh, coming into the Pay Equity Commission, so they've always been very active. But what they've been doing uh, more recently, uh, presumably to generate business, is they've started what they call as the wage gap, uh, the gender wage gap program, which uh, they send letters off primarily to private sector employers asking them to send in information with respect to their wage rates and so on and so forth. Um, all under the guise of research and so there's a live issue about whether or not an employer is compelled to, to uh, send in that data. The downside is if you don't send in that data they will come knocking on your door in any event to see if you're in compliance and so it's sort of a catch-22 that employers find themselves in. What are the hidden costs of non-compliance? The biggest is the fact that there is no time limit under this legislation and therefore anyone can come forward now and complain. It doesn't have to be a current employee, it can be a past employee, it can be a union even if they've signed a deal. And uh, it, you know, if you're an organization that was supposed to have done this back in 1990, you're looking at retroactive adjustments back to, uh, to that period of time. And now the big kicker is the interest rate. Uh, because they will attach interest to the sum that's owing and they will apply the interest rate that uh, was to be in effect at the time of the plan. So in 1990, for example, the interest rate that will be used is 12.5%, which is obviously very, much higher than it is now. What are some strategies for dealing with the Pay Equity Commission's random audit? Well, I think a lot of the strategies that are employed by employers is really one of delay, especially if you don't have a plan in place or if you have a plan but you haven't maintained it. It's really stalling such that you can either do the work yourself or get a consultant in to do the work such that when the commission ultimately does come and say, okay, you know, time's up, show us that you've got a plan and that you're compliant, you've actually uh, done the work. Nothing happens quickly at the uh, commission, so even though you get these letters, I think that at least should tell someone we need to to look at it. 